Broadcast partner, national champion, wrestler, and coach Jim Gibbons. And Jim, the dual meet championship for the Big Tens are up for grabs. They really are. Since the Penn State-Iowa match earlier in the year was not considered a conference meet, this whole dual meet uh, conference championship is up for grabs, like you say. Penn State, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, all there at the top. So this is a very important duel, but everybody's looking towards the Big Tens and the NCAAs in March. Yeah, you know, rankings, you know, seedings can only take you so far. It's really how you're wrestling at this point in time. It's not where you are, which direction your arrow's pointed. And what a great environment to find out what direction your arrow's pointed with in front of 12,000 people in Carver Hawkeye Arena. For the Gophers, the arrow is pointed up the further up the line they go with their heavier weights. Yeah, you take a look at Kevin Steinhaus back in after injury here. He's been out about half the season here, but he's coming along. And of course, the man on the right there, one of their leaders there, the two-time NCAA and conference champion, Tony Nelson. And Scott Schiller has really been the story for this team, dominant from the beginning of the season on. Here, the number one ranked wrestler at 197 pounds. Good wrestler in the bottom position. Good, solid wrestler all the way through. He can go ahead and get out quickly. He can ride you in the top position. And he also has the ability to go ahead and get after straight train doubles, that type of thing. He's a good athlete, good scrambler here, and he's been very solid for the of the season. Well, it's another good team for Coach Jay Robinson in his 28th year. But Tom Brands in his eighth season in Iowa has a solid team as well. And we'll go to the heavyweights and look how they're doing at 97 and heavyweight there. Well, you know, Coach Brands has six or seven known quantities, but he's going to need some production out of these guys here at the end of the lineup. Nathan Burak back in the lineup here. Is considered possibly redshirting, and he wrestled unattached in the Midlands, but he's doing a great job. And Bobby Telford, you know, much like uh, Anthony Nelson here from Minnesota, guy who gets out quickly from underneath, pretty really dominant in the top position. And the very good scrambler. He's got to be able to use that size advantage he has in this weight class to go ahead and do better and possibly win a conference title and a national title. Well, we love this border war rivalry excitement. And to say that the Iowa fans are enthusiastic is an understatement, but that might be all well said for our third broadcast partner, Mr. Enthusiasm himself, Shane Sparks. Every second will matter. Remember last year at Minnesota, each team won five matches, four of those decided by two points or less. Iowa won in the third tie-breaking criteria of total match points. Recall 149, Dylan Ness in the final 15 seconds of the match had Mike Kelly on his back at a four-point, two near fall. If he gets the fifth swipe, he gets three near fall, the major, and Minnesota wins. That's 4,258 seconds of wrestling, and one second was huge. Expect that same attempt today let's look at today's matchup brought to you by defense soap defends what you have built with defense soaps natural solution for wrestling hygiene visit them on the web at defensesoap.com we'll start at 25 it's going to be Brancale versus Gilman at 33 David Thorne and Ramos they've had some fights in the past at 41 Dardanes versus Jeva at 49 Nick Dardanes versus Grothus. At 157, it'll be Ness versus St. John. And then at 165, the second half, Danny Zilberberg up against Moore. 174, a lot of people waiting for this one. Storley versus Evans. And at 84, Steinhaus versus Lofthauser Brooks. At 197, number one ranked Scott Schiller for the Gophers up against Nathan Burek for the Hawkeyes. And at heavyweight, the NCAA champion, Tony Nelson, up against Bobby Telford. Great environment here, Tim. And once again, here, Carver Hawkeye Arena. Almost standing room only. Tom Brands, eighth year at Iowa. Three NCAA titles on, under his belt. Look at that record, 142-14. 
it going up against Jay Robinson, 28th year. He was, of course, an assistant for Dan Gable here at Iowa, moved on, has built a program. He also has three NCAA titles at Minnesota. What a program he's built. We talk a lot about him, Jim, as a program builder. Yeah, he's been an innovator of the sport. You know, he's a guy who thinks outside the box. And, and uh, I know, you know he's just built a great culture there at the University of Minnesota, championship culture. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't see him getting out of it. <laughs> it's just, he just uh, is constantly there, a steady presence, and is getting great help from his associate head coach, Brandon Eggman, and the rest of the coaching staff there, Luke Becker, Jason Ness, and the rest of their team. Well, talking about Minnesota, they're coming off a disappointing loss to Michigan. Came down to heavyweight, where that upstart, Kuhn, Adam Kuhn, the uh, heavyweight, the freshman from Michigan, upset the NCAA Tony Nelson to win the meet. Lost a couple of overtime matches, and uh, so it's done a little bit for them to lose to Michigan. Well, you know, this two things here that stand out. Number one, that heavyweight weight class in the conference is just amazingly tough here. And as they get to the schedule here, traveling, I and mean, that pays a little bit of it. It's going to be exciting to watch that when we get to the conference conference season but uh, you know that is part of the grind here that you have with the conference schedule and uh, I think nowhere is it more evident when you get into late January because you know you, your school's back in session you're trying to train these athletes uh, a couple times a day at least in some instances and you know, it's, it's a grind for these athletes but hopefully that pays off in March we're starting at 125 always exciting place to start Sam Brancale for Minnesota a redshirt freshman out of Eden Prairie Minnesota up against another redshirt freshman Thomas Gilman and Brancale big throw and back points this looks like he's got him tight there Tim this is all the way he's got the legs in Gilman doing a nice job of fighting off of that but Brand Kale's really not in a position to be able to bring the head up. If he can get the head up, the shoulders will go to the mat. Could but be this a is, really big move for the Gophers. You know, I was just saying is that, 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 that thinking about it in my mind, this may be an opportunity for bonus points, but going with the double overhook and the throw right there, no fear on Brand Kale's part. And, that, and this is going to take a lot out of uh, uh, Gilman, but he's done a nice job of getting his belt buckled back to the mat. You know, if you're going to get off your shoulders here, you've got to go ahead and try to get your hips turned first. and. And uh, Brent Kale would do well just to keep him here and to wear him out. Good call, Jim. I mean, it's not a bad place to ride the rest of the, uh, the, the, the period here. But he's back at it. Now he's getting potentially back points again. Referee's counting this as all one move. Boy, I tell you what, Brent Kale looks smooth up there in the top position. Hips up in great Two position. Two more back points. Actually, I think he just gave three, Tim, for the total move. Oh, right? Three, you're right. We had five up there anticipating. And so three points for the move. Good call, Jim. 5-0. Big throw by Brand Kale. And the escape. Right away. You Makes can, it five to one. You can come back from stuff like this if you just stay patient. And there's the start of a comeback for Thomas Gilman. Two points. Take down Gilman out of Council Bluffs, Iowa, but at Scott Catholic High School where he is a four-time state champion in Nebraska. You have to take the, think that that took a little bit out of uh, Brand K uh, uh, Gilman. But now he's whipped over again. This is a little bit tighter, Tim. It's tight. This would be huge. There's the fall. Big start for Sam Brandkale, the freshman from Minnesota. Well, Big upset and a pin. Well, you know, the first move right there, Tim, was impressive. But to come back with that whip over and put the legs in again, get the ball here it is right now you know I think Gilman was a little bit that's a kind of a half shot right there whip over and now he's got a chance to put the legs in and see how the head is off the mat this time when the head's off the mat it's nothing but shoulders there's the fall Pat Fitzgerald out of Oklahoma one of the top officials in the nation the head official here today Jamie George helping him out here's David Thorne David Thorne not Jimmy Gulaban, but uh, uh, David Thorne from Minnesota is uh, had some good matches with Ramos in the past. We'll be taking a look at David Thorne, the redshirt senior, up against Tony Ramos, also a senior. Thorne out of St. Michael, Minnesota. That's probably the latest arrival we've ever seen out of Tony Ramos. Probably wasn't uh, sure that he got uh, yeah. back in there warming up, not expecting a fall. 
He's usually the first there guy out there in the mat, and Thorne was able to beat him out there in the mat. Boy, Ramos right in the shot here. Good finish opportunity here. Has the leg way up in the air. Sh Thorne showing a lot of flexibility and balance. And what you want to try to do if you're Ramos here is get to the center of the mat. Does a nice job there. Two points for Ramos. Trying to get the Hawkeyes back in a position to uh, take the, well, they're not going to take the lead after this match because Minnesota's Sam Brancale, the 125-pounder, came out and got a big fall over Thomas Gilman in the first period for the Gophers. Put the Gophers out front 6-0 in the meet. The takedown and then the escape makes the score 2-1. to one. Yeah, Thorne is, is moving up from 125 pounds where he was a really big 125-pounder last season, All-American. Of course, Ramos has been in the weight class here for a number of years and you know, held the number one ranking for a period of time. And, and uh, everybody knows that uh, if you've watched any amount of wrestling here, that that 33-pound uh, weight class is wide open. Ramos will probably have something to say with it. Comes the NCAA tournament time. Thorn ranked a little bit lower. See that nine ranking? But he's also a very dangerous wrestler. Got a lot of offense. And I think the, the key for him is to be able to, uh, to slow Ramos down a little bit, and maybe be a little bit more patient with his offense. And then for Ramos, I mean, it's just a shocker. He's out here six minutes earlier than what he thought he'd be. Ramos out front, two to one. The Gophers out front, six zero. Here's the inner mat rankings at 133. Didn't even have time to put him up for 125. You see Tony Ramos, the number three ranked wrestler in the this weight class. David Thorne, an All-American last year. One minute. Ramos, a two-time All-American for the Hawkeyes. Good, it's coming. Here you it's see coming. Ramos getting his head worked on a little bit. Low ankle shot off that collar tie by Thorne. I think this is where it, that the uh, Hawkeye coaching staff, Tom Brands, would like to see a little more hand fighting here, maybe try to get the advantage a little bit more for Ramos. And he's, he's generally been able to do that throughout his career, be the first to work the head make the other man work a little harder. And those shots tend to open up later in the match. Thorne and Ramos having good years, both wrestling very well. Ramos never having lost here in Carver Hawkeye. Defending the turf. Open up, guys, open up. Let's go, let's go. You see both guys have kind of settled in right now with, the, with these collar ties. And we do get through a first period now at 133. And Ramos out front, two to one over Thorne. Two highly ranked wrestlers. And Tony Ramos is our State Farm State of Success. You see, he's undefeated at Carver Hawkeye, 32 and 0 all time right here. Eight no record this season in this house. 20 seconds of riding time build up after the takedown here by, by Ramos. Now we're up to 27. And uh, Russell, Russell. I think Ramos, I mean, this is what you have to kind of do and, and, and stay in your advantage, really make the, the top guy work. And so if in order for uh, uh, Thorne, who's, who's not a candidate for a major, but you never know, but you've got to work a guy until you find that out. But this is one of the ways you do this. Either the body blows in the sport, really make a guy work hard. And, and uh, if, he, if he gets out quickly, it's, it's just a different mindset that you have as opposed to battling and battling and battling to get your hips out and get that quick escape. And there's the escape. 102 of riding time. So Thorne will only have to ride Ramos in the third period a couple seconds to if there's no takedown here this time. But still plenty of time for both athletes to get on their offense. I mean, this is sometimes you know wasted territory in a match where if you're not careful, you're not, you're not on the offensive. Not looking for your shots, not trying to score points. It can catch up with you late in the match. Two to two, the strength of an early takedown. Tony Ramos in the first period, an escape by Thorne in the first period, and now an escape in the second period by Thorne. He started the second period down. You know, it's, it's, Ramos does like to shoot to that leg right there that, that, that's, uh, it has the, uh, the knee pad on it, but he's really become proficient in shooting to that back leg, and that's what's really kind of slowing him down right now. As you can see how he's, Thorne has kept that left leg back, and it's just a natural thing for him. He feels more comfortable now, and that's why you don't see all the shots off of Ramos, because he's much more comfortable when the guy leads the other leg. Now he's working the head real hard. I mean, this is just, 
extending the vertebrae in a guy's neck. But if you make a guy work on that upper shoulder and neck area here real hard, you know, it pays off later in the match. End of the second period, and talking about that work in the head, that's something this young man has done well all his career. Work in the head, heavy hands, going behind. Yeah, that, that, that gets a lot of his points on go-behinds, but also off the of shots after he's worked the head pretty solidly. And really, it was a treat doing that, uh, what makes him great segment here on Tony Ramos last week because it really kind of spelled out what, what he does well. We'll be taking a look at the Jim's What Makes Them Great segment later in the intermission, and we're going to take a look at that two-time NCAA champion, Tony Nelson. Great segments on BTN. What makes them great with the expertise? My broadcast partner, Jim Gibbons. Three to two, Ramos with that escape. A minute and a half left in the third period, and it comes down to uh, execution. Yeah, it really does, and there's a nice single leg attempt there. He was able to get to that back leg. Good job Whoa. of scrambling by Thorne. Now he's on the other side. Ramos is pretty proficient. He's got his elbow deep right there. He's elbow deep on that shot. It's made very difficult for Thorne to stay out of this. Now he brings it up underneath his uh, shoulder. But the thing I don't like about this technique is if the guy's got the flexibility that Thorne has, you don't really gain anything by that. You've got to you, it, 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 it creates hip separation. Those hips are about three. That's why that sweep didn't work. Too, far, too much separation. You've got to pop your hips in, almost like you're doing a clean, and then hit, hit something. Comes to the collar, but bring your hips closer to his hips. See how this hip separation is there? Thorne can stay on his feet. It's almost as rarely would see this call, but it's almost a stalemate if he doesn't get going. Because advantage Ramos right here if he doesn't get going. There's the two points takedown at the edge of the mat for Ramos. The score now five to two with 30 seconds left in the third period. Just excellent patience, you know. And, and, Carrying your weight like that on one leg, it, it, it's more taxing that, than what you think. And, and the riding time in favor of Ramos, he's got the riding time that really cannot be erased. And here's where you want to build for your tournament wrestling. You want to keep the man in the down position if you're Ramos and a nice jam. Even if you give up a reversal, if you have riding time already cinched. Stay in the top position. Finish your periods in the top position. Good match by Ramos. Workmanlike. Ramos, the number three ranked 133 pounder. Looking for a championship. Looking in good form. Tony Ramos, the winner. Three points for the Hawkeyes. It's now six to three. Minnesota over Iowa after two matches. Tony Ramos, Dan Gable, Sam Brincow. And Ramos with the win. We'll be back for more BTN Wrestling presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities, discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Wrestling on BTN is presented by Cliff Keen Athletics, built for life. Cold outside, hot in Garber Hawker Arena, and we're going to go to Shane right now, who's with a real hot wrestler, Sam Brankale. Thank you, Tim. You thought up talk about throwing the first punch. You come in here, you stick the number three ranked guy in the country. What was the mindset coming into a hospital environment? Well, uh, Jay told us before the match that he's seeing a lot of things happen here uh, for the Gophers, especially like great moments, number one guys going down and stuff like that. And when it comes down to it, he told me to just take every second by second, you know, first period, second period, and then third period. And I saw the opportunity and I took it. Uh, took a bad shot and I drove him on. Congratulations, big win, Sam. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shane, and thanks, Sam. 141 pounds, number five ranked Chris Dardane up against number 11, Josh Jeva from Iowa. This is going to be an interesting match here because I think it's a good style matchup here for Jeva. Uh, Dardane's, you know, I, I like the way he wrestles. I mean, he's, he's uh, always coming at you with heavy hands, really works on passing that elbow, it really gains a lot, like, like uh, Ramos, who we saw from Iowa, a lot of similarity here. Work the head, try to pass the elbow, 
and uh, really tough with her head hands defense. Rarely will you see that leg that has the Minnesota uh, M on it here come forward in the stance. He likes to just keep that staggered stance all the way through the match. Jeb, on the other hand, that's the side he likes to duck to, that, that, uh, that he's leaving that black knee pad. He likes to go off that elbow tie right there. So Jeb has opportunities to be able to score early in this match, and you'll see him give up a little ground action, guys, and uh, action, hit that go, sweet little duck. And I've seen it hit, happen about four or five times, but it's just... Uh, it's, it's something where he's capable of doing. He's tough in the top position, so interesting matchup here. Jeva out of Yardley, Pennsylvania, Council Rock High School, all the way here to Iowa City from Penn, uh, the Pennsylvania area, and Chris Dardane out of Chicago, Oak Park River Forest. He and his brother Nick wrestling at 141 and 149 for the Gophers. Right now, Dardanes has got not been able to get that shot off. I think that uh, Jeb has done a good job of holding his position. There's that kind of a, a, a full shot blocked pretty well by Jeb. One minute. Really working the head hard. Kind of fight until they get to the inside. Big crowd here today. But each time, each wrestler is responsible for especially the Hawkeyes, to get the crowd into it and uh, pull the trigger and, and, and score. And that's all it takes for this crowd, Jim. Yeah, it, it uh, doesn't take much for this crowd to get excited, particularly when the Gophers come to town. There's a nice little uh, shot. See how Dardanes was giving ground that time and dropped his level. But there wasn't any penetration there. And, and Jeb has, I think, done a pretty good job of uh, fighting here with his head and hands. Kind of interesting. This is a rare visit by Minnesota. They've met 11 times in the last seven years, and only three of those have been here in Carver Hawkeye. Big Ten scheduling came out a couple of years ago, and they did a, a little bit different uh, scheduling, and then they had them going back to back to Minnesota, and it just worked out that way. So, hasn't and Minnesota hasn't been here often in the last uh, six, seven years. That's the end of the first period, and. There wasn't any scoring. It's 0-0 as we head to the second period. Yeah, Coach two, Tom Brands. Yeah, Coach Tom Brands got to be pretty happy with Jeva's uh, results right here. He's been able to keep it close, held his position in the middle of the mat, and uh, Good. So you know, everybody in, works on hand fighting here, but you know, Jeva didn't give up any ground, and, and Gardines wasn't anywhere close to getting a shot off. So now we're going to go to the four minutes of mat wrestling and see who has the advantage there. Pretty much a parallel ride there. Quick escape. 15 seconds. Get your face off your face. Your offense off your face. You can tell that uh, what Dardanes is looking for now, not coming off of his little bit more motion, a little more head fakes. Maybe not as confident as he can get his shot off from the tie and may have to do it from the free. Uh, position and again this is kind of working into uh, Jeva's magic a little bit to keep the match close and, and win a few scrambles. 1-0. Iowa's Jeva leads, leads Chris Dardanes. We're in the halfway mark of the second period here at Carver Hawkeye where Minnesota leads Iowa 6-3 to three in the meet. Yeah, when you get a, you, you get in a situation like this where, where Dardanes is clearly the you know the, the ranked wrestler and I mean Jeva not bad at 11, but uh, clearly the favorite here. You know, you've got to pick up the pace of the match, and sometimes that, that just by doing that, you you kind of get out of sync a little bit and see if Jeva can take advantage of that because there have not, not been any shots, just a lot of hand fighting, and this is the this is where what I'm trying to get at here is that these both these coaching staffs want these guys to score points. You know, get get after it and score points. And here we've had almost five minutes of wrestling on the feet. And they haven't been able to do that, but that's what you're going to have to do is score points on demand when you need to when you get to the next level, particularly in the tournaments. 15 seconds left in the second period. Not many points at all have been scored here. 1-0, Jeva with that escape in the beginning of this second period. And if nothing changes, as it doesn't look like it will, we'll go to the third period. Chris Gardane, for the Gophers, will choose down, have his choice. He'll sure he'll choose down. Let's go, Red. Let's go, Red. There's a little bit. Of, they're going to go neutral. See, yeah, he's, he doesn't want to be underneath Jeva. You're right. Yeah, so that's, you know, that quick escape, pretty important. And no stall warning on Jeva right now. And, and you know, I, I really think it's too early for Jeva to go, you know, totally defense. But he's done a pretty good job of shutting 
Dardanes down, and Dardanes is going to have to show that he has more than what he's shown in the previous five minutes. There he stuffed the head a little bit. But hasn't again, penetrated past the uh, heads and the arms. And, and one of the things that if you become a good hand fighter, you can go ahead and be heavy with the hands and everything, but if your feet don't follow and put your body in a position to shoot, you know, you're doing it all with your from the waist up. Shot warded off by Jeva. A minute 20 left. And look at the there's a slight disconnect between what's happening in the upper body of Dardanes and the lower body. He hasn't really lower body hasn't really caught up and put himself in a position to shoot. Already a minute gone. This will potentially be the, the second biggest surprise of the night so far. And if it the, goes that Iowa way, it kind of evens things out. Dardane's just not being able to get past that hand fighting right there. And but you see there's no penetration. There's finally a little bit of penetration. But he doesn't follow it up. You see how his rear end came back out when he's at the point of attack? You can't do that. You gotta follow it through. You gotta commit. So he has that opportunity again. He's gonna shoot and reshoot. See how he comes back out, Tim? Making contact, and that's the surest way to be one and done. It was a warning, and now the shot, he's in. Dardanes and the Gophers are in, but as Jeva got him caught up. That's a stalemate situation likely, but Jeva's doing a nice job of keeping his head up, and he's got that leg elbow deep. It's gonna go in his favor. There's the stalemate, five seconds left. <laughs> Riding time not a factor. And so the 1-0 will stand up. Josh Jeva, the number 11 ranked 141 pounder, defeats the favored number five, Chris Dardanes. Three points up on the board for the Hawkeyes. Not things at six. Dardanes just never got anything going. Well, you know, again, he was able to get to that shot, but then at the critical moment, and Jeva didn't hurry it. He was able to roll through, get to those ankles, and uh, he took a couple of kicks to the head in the process, but was able to come away with the victory. Nick Dardanes out on the mat. Ready to go at 149. Luke Becker, former NCAA champion for the Gophers, assistant coach, getting him ready to go. And Brody Grothis, the sophomore. Out of Davenport, Iowa, Assumption High School. Both is in on a shot right away. The thing that, uh, that you saw in the match before with Jeva, Jeva was able to go ahead and hand fight right away. And, you know, both these programs right, 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 pride right, 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 themselves right, right. in that uh, ability to go ahead and, and battle inside, work inside. Both is immediately went for the shot, got his head worked on. So, guy that said ranked 13th in the country, had some nice wins so far this season, beating three. Uh, ranked wrestlers recently. Hey, your runner hooks are good. Your runner hooks are good. Dardane's last year's seventh place finisher. There's a nice high crotch shot by Dardane's. But he brings his hips Great in. Lift. Yeah, you see how he brought his hips in and arched up? Almost like he's doing a clean. That uh, exercise right there and brought it all the way through and, and uh, was able to get the takedown on, on Grothus. Grothus, who had three straight wins against ranked uh, top 10 opponents before he ran into Jake Suflo for Nebraska last week and was defeated, but that's the reason he's up to 13 because he's had some real quality wins for the Hawkeyes. And Nick Dardanes, one of the best. Yeah, he's in a battle with Mike Kelly, and I think Mike Kelly uh, has had some success against Grothus, but found himself in a situation where he wasn't really beating the ranked wrestlers in the open competition. And, and Coach Brands obviously decided to go with the guy that had the hot hand, and Grothus was able to come through with some big wins. You're still set, top man. Set. Not what you would have predicted the first three matches. And we've had everything. We've had the big fall. We've had a real workmanlike job by Ramos scoring five, six points with riding time, and then we have the 1-0 battle at 141. Won by the Iowa Hawkeye, set, Josh Jeva, and there's the head coach, Jay Robinson, in his 23th, 8th year. 
A lot going through that mind. He's a thinker. Nice job of bringing the hips in. Hooked, hooked the bottom leg. He's going to immediately go ahead and attack the, uh, the upper body as they go off the mat. 108 of riding time right now for Dardanes. Luke Becker out on the mat telling Nick Dardanes to let was. him go if, if it gets dangerous. Good. Set. Top. Set. They're Broke. saying they're cutting. Yeah, I think that's just out of respect for Grothus. Grothus has the ability to come to his feet and go with that double overhook, uh, almost like what you saw Brian, Brand Kale uh, do from Minnesota. And so... Well, 141, the win for Iowa, is what Tom Brands was talking about. If they're going to be a factor for the national championship, they needed to have 141 and 149. This man right here, Grothus, be, you know, a factor. Nice high crotch attempt, you're right, Tim. Nice high crotch, but working to try to keep uh, the opponent on the mat. Two points for Nick Dardanes. He's pulled the trigger twice, executed well. And that's pretty good work right there. He's had his head to the outside, did a little dump to keep uh, uh, Grothus back on the mat and was able to go ahead and finish through. And, and uh, no when, when he gets on, he gets down. a slight angle, keeps his hips down and drives over the top here. They're fearless. I say they, both, both of the Dardanes are kind of fearless. They, they'll bull rush you from any position. And they've gone up weight class since last year. They were both at 33 and 41, and I think the difference is um, they do look stronger. They look, uh, you know, they don't look undersized. Yeah, it's, it's a great point because they don't they look like they're starting to you know, get to the point in their career where they're cutting a little bit too much and holding that weight, particularly this time of year, is uh, a tough thing to do. You're in the grind. You're trying to get a lot of training in. Definitely look like they're carrying the weight better. Two takedowns for Nick Dardanes. It's also, Tim, it's been good for David Thorne, too. I mean, the, the first three wrestlers in the weight class last year were, were, were weight control was, even though they may have no issues with it, but you could just tell that they look better at these weight classes. And the Iowa crowd getting on Dardanes, and the official Pat Fitzgerald does call Nick Dardanes for stalling. That's the first. That's his warning. Yeah, I think I think that Coach around. Brands is looking for the escape, and I think that that's uh, good set, top man. You know, I think that I think what was there. Be honest with you. So, hand fighting there by Grothus. And you know, if you're Dardanes in the first period and keep a guy down, that's worth a stall warning because he's not going to. You know, I, I often say that is that you know here's you know, Coach Brands is going to come over here and try to address the escape situation and probably look to protest it. Win. I think he's got a case here because the, the rule is that you, if the guy's got an arm uh, all the way across the center part of the uh, 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 back, just a discussion, no protest, no well, warning either. If, if you want to challenge it, go sooner. A little discussion, and I think that's good that uh, Pat Fitzgerald allowed it. Uh, Tom came up, wanted something clarified, on, and uh, sometimes it's not handled that way. You, go. you just uh, got to be wise as an official. Sometimes they just kind of don't let the coaches talk. Escape, Grothus. Titans have scored four to two. Nick Dardanes has two uh, takedowns from his feet, and uh, He's, he's a real fighter, real intense uh, um, pace there for uh, Dardanes. Well, you can see the lower body coming into the shot. Not much penetration on the shot, but he immediately comes up and keeps his hips, uh, his, his, uh, brings his hips in, sets the guy over on his haunches, and Rokas doing a pretty good job of fighting that off. That's well done. Four to two, second period. Dardanes for Minnesota out in front of... Grothus for Iowa, and it's 6-6 six, six in the dual meet every, as Shane said, every second counts. Well, you're looking for bonus points right now if you're, if you're at, at Dardanes. You can't, gotta be careful because Grothus is dangerous in the upper body, but the safest place for Dardanes to be is in on Grothus' leg. And uh, if you're Grothus, you know, you might want to hang back a little bit and wait for that. A little half shot by Grothus there. Yeah, Front but, headlock by Dardanes. But you might be more comfortable waiting here for, for, for Dardanes to come and, and then work from that position. There we go. Just what you talked about there, Jim. And yeah. so now, what's uh, Grothus need to do to finish this off? He's got elbow deep. He's got to bring his head up. Post on his hands. He's going to spring that left leg up. And he's got to make a turn. 
but keep his hip separation. Keep his hips separated from the chest. And looking for the defensive fall here. You do not have to have control. And if your back is on the mat for one second, the pin is well, cold. Now, but now Dardane's coming up, perhaps in a situation, the man whose head well, stays up, Jim. Yeah, and, and, and Dardane's has allowed his head to slip down, so it's still a scoring opportunity for growth. He says works himself back into a scoring position. Ten seconds left. The crowd looking to help growth is try to get this score all knotted up. It's four to two. Can the points be scored? And the time runs out. <laughs> Four to two, still the scramble. You'd have to say one by Dordanes there. It was a good scramble by Grothis, but he wasn't able to complete it. No, he really wasn't. Here's the scramble as we go through. You see, we'd almost got the, the fall. Clearly not a fall, but Grothis maybe spent a little more time looking for the fall as opposed to getting the points. And better served to get the points. So Dardanes takes the uh, down position here. So this match is within reach, but nice freight train double, but he did bring his hips to the party. You hit a guy straight on like that, if you feel the like least bit of resistance, you've got to change your angle of attack. Now, Grothus barely be able to get to that leg. Head on the mat. But he got, he's doing a nice job with that right hand up on that uh, waist. And moving forward, so. There's a battle going on here, and the fans know it. They're trying to bring Brody Grothus to an upset win over the number three ranked wrestler in the nation. Well, Grothus will need two takedowns and a ride out to tie it, okay? So riding time is a factor and it will remain a factor through the course of this match. So but in favor Dardanes of Dardanes. also has the warning of the stalling on him. That's so correct. there is a stall warning already given to Dardanes. He's holding position right there in the middle. And I think his uh, thought process of getting a major is out the window. You mentioned it, Jim. Riding time is a lock, so it's effectively five to two. It's a three-point lead for Nick Dardanes with 40 seconds left in regulation. Rothis is going to have to do more than a takedown, but take it one, one at a time. Well, if he does get a stall warning on, on Dardanes, which is, is moving forward. And the crowd's, the crowd's bringing it. Will Pat Fitzgerald follow? Doesn't look like it because growth is down. There, there's the warning. That's so what, it's one. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for that shot by Grothus, and that's what got the call. So now Grothus only needs a takedown. 15 seconds left. To tie. If, if Grothus gets a takedown, we go to overtime. 11 seconds left. You know, hold your position. Present yourself if you're Dardanes. You can give a point. Yeah. And it looks like Dardanes is able to keep the heaviness on the head. And that's the end of the match. Dardanes with riding time. The crowd doesn't like it, but the Gophers love it. It's five to three with riding time. Three more points on the board for the Gophers. It's nine to six after four matches. That's Nick Dardanes. Little revenge for his brother's loss. So it's nine to six in favor of the Gophers. We'll be back for 157, the NCAA champion, right after this. Yeah. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Did you know that unchecked, COVID-19 can have a multiplier effect? On average, someone who has the virus is likely to spread it to two more people. In no time, those three become 15. 15 could jump to over 60 and so on. Wash your hands, avoid big groups, stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Don't miss any exciting wrestling action. Check out our upcoming streaming schedule or go to video.btn.com. There's our... Uh schedule coming up lots of great masters you see nebraska at purdue nebraska had a big win uh, last night against ohio state big win against ohio state dan gable never missing a match here and dylan ness getting ready for the gophers at 157 he'll be going up the in, up against the ncaa champion Derek st john well dylan ness has been had one of those strange seasons Tw five losses uh, moving up a weight class NCAA runner-up at 149 pounds a couple years ago. And uh, wild wrestler. And, but you're going to get up against one of the guys who's just solid as can be, steady, no emotion. 
I mean, not very much rocks him off of uh, his base and was coming off of a loss last week, but uh, the guy had to take him down four times to do it. The bad news for Mr. Ness is that St. John is 12-0 in his career after a loss. And so he is uh, really good coming off a loss, and Dylan Ness is really good at some funky stuff. But what the coaches would like is to have him mix that fundamentals in with the funk. Yeah, that, that's when you got a guy like that that has those special skills and special talents. And now Ness is coming up with his perfect job of, of getting his head in the right spot and a nice job of shucking uh, the uh, St. John's body off. Now he's able to scoop the bottom leg. Got a great opportunity to score here. All he has to do is clear his head. And I think he's going to do that. Well, just, you know, just wanting to say something like that, St. John just gives you that extra little oomph to keep himself in better position to be able to score. Or to get that stalemate. Yeah, I think that, 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 that's his kind of what's happening. Their head was cleared. Yep, yeah, and the hip slipped. Really and well done. High-level stuff there by Ness. Not only to get to the leg, but also to finish. Right here, you're going to have to move up or you're going to have 10,000 fans on you. Dylan Ness, the big takedown against the NCAA champion St. John. 2-0, the lead for the Gopher. The Gophers lead 9-6. We're in the fifth match here at the meet at Carver Hawkeye Good. between the number two ranked right Hawkeyes right and the number forward. three ranked Gophers. And, and here's what separated St. John in the tough matches. He's always been able to get out quick. And if you're Ness, you're going to go ahead and want to try to stay with him a little bit longer. Nice job of hand fighting. Continues to work through. Ness building up. Staying with that ankle, but boy, that, that's what he does really well for a tall guy in, in, in that weight class. He's just uh, sometimes taller guys are easier to ride, but not Derek St. John. That's why he's a champ. Two to one. Ness out in front of St. John here in the first period at 157. St. John losing last week in that exciting duel meet between Nebraska and Iowa shown here on BTN. James Green. A big win, four takedowns, as Jim mentioned, to defeat St. John 9-7. to seven. He's a real deal. Yeah, he, and then Green needed every one of them. Green got, uh, gave up a takedown late in that match, but uh, you know, I think St. John is a, you know, there's two takedown guys, one takedown guys. Derek St. John is a four takedown guy. You gotta take him down four times to beat him. That says a lot. As we said, congratulations to Nebraska there. there uh, had a big win against Ohio State. Oh, 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 Tom Ryan. And congratulations to Mark Manning. So many good programs, great programs in the Big Ten, and it's because of great coaches. Here's the here's what the Minnesota coaching staff was talking about with regard to Ness. I mean, create some offense, straight on double leg, and uh, it sense that St. John felt a little danger there. It's not as easy as just going around a guy. Okay. That's doing a nice job, not only in the shot, but bringing and gathering his hips underneath him and keeping the head up. Yeah, it looks to see how he tries to improve his position here. Now he's going to go ahead and come to that bottom, you know, that leg, try to get St. John on his hip. And St. John really just flares that right knee out. See, I didn't go down to his right hip. But now he changes the position up a little bit. Boy, he is just dangerous. See how he has a hold of the wrist? He's looking for a chance to come with his legs through. And time runs out. Oh. And that was all instituted, instigated by Ness. And uh, Luke Becker, the NCAA champion assistant coach. And look there, there's Derek St. John. Iowa, Minnesota, 9-6. to six. The Gophers like, out in front. Looked like St. John was a little bit along for the ride there. You know, they couldn't really kind of break free uh, like you'd normally see him do. That was a uh, nice work by Ness. And he understands that he's got to build on his lead right now as opposed to just hang back. Good spiral ride action right there. Now he's going to come back. I like this action right there. Good work by St. John. Now he's going to work into a headlock. Now a roll through here. Good scramble by both guys. Wow. This is... <laughs> Ness is on his A game here today, boys. I know it's that. Break, break, break. Dylan Ness. The junior out of Bloomington, Minnesota, John F. Kennedy High School. We've mentioned that a lot over the years because his brother Jason, that's the NCAA champion, who had that big takedown and back points against Daniel Dennis in the NCAA finals a few years ago. One of the most exciting moves to win a championship I I've ever seen. Uh, normally, I'd be talking about, yeah, keeping the riding time, but this match isn't going to be decided by riding time. There's going to be a lot of action and flurries before this is over with here. Reversal. Reversal by 
Gary St. John. Yeah, nice job by St. John of continuing on, not just taking the escape. He had it right there and turned it around, got the uh, take or got the reversal. Three to two. Well, he needs to change the tempo of the match, and a reversal is a great way to do that. If he just got, gets an escape, he's got to deal with Ness getting back in on his leg. Here, at least, he can get on the top position and make Ness work. You know, all those explosive little scrambles that Ness does, you know, they do take their toll, you know, later in the match, but... Uh, So this is kind of camping out a little bit in the bottom position. 43 seconds left in the second period. It's 3-2 to two in favor of the NCAA champion, Derek St. John, over two years ago, NCAA runner-up, Dylan Ness. And Coach Brands, you see that, definitely wants to keep uh, Ness in a down position. They found an advantage here. Set, head in the center. Right on the ankle. Ankle and tight waist ride. They move up off of that. Yeah, and this is uh, when you kind of hit that switch position. I was looking for something really, really high risk. Here's where St. John will just basically come back into that. Most guys don't get away with that switching off of ankle rides. I always say it's like putting a saddle on yourself and you switch into an ankle ride, and it's no different for Ness, who's really good scramble. Riding time reverse, starting to go the way of St. John. Not a factor right now, under 15 seconds. But uh, the factor could be the crowd, and that's what the Hawkeyes uh, love to uh, to wrestle with. A crowd, 10,000 plus, that are uh, obviously very partisan, very savvy, and they're wanting to will Derek St. John to a big win here. Interesting choice. Luke Becker, looking back, uh, is pretty insistent that uh, Ness would take the down position. So. You know, he, he's had some success on the feet. He had to, not had much success in the bottom position, so that's a strategy that they wanted to employ probably right from the beginning. But they knew that they wanted to see Ness in the down, down position. Uh, at this time of the year, does it have something to do with this time of the year? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, because really the tempo of the match would dictate that you wouldn't do this, but so. Well, maybe you find out a little bit later that you're not going to have much success, but I like the call right here going down. I mean, uh, now you know. You're not going to win unless you get out. That's right. Whether it's the Big Tens, the NCAAs, Derek St. John building that riding time, the crowd seeing it. Well, They're going to cheer here in a couple of seconds, and there they go, a minute of riding time, and now can Derek St. John turn this? Well, I'll tell you what. The question is, is he going to give up uh, back points before he gets the reversal? You know, <laughs> if that's a, is that the trade-off that you really want to have right now? The funkiness, the scramble ability of Dylan Ness, always real present. Heel pick. He has the left foot in, 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 in bounds here, so look at St. John, just really wise as to where he was. They're going to go out of bounds. They'll come back to the center. 47 seconds left. A minute 34 riding time now. Advantage for Derek St. John. Well, for a short period of time, you had a cement mixer, the snake, whatever you want to call it here, hooked up on St. John. And St. John just said, I'm going to get off the mat, all right? He did everything to be able to go ahead and, and, and tactfully do that. And again, it created a, a scramble for Ness. But riding time already there. I would expect for Ness to look for some sort of reversal, but it's just so hard to do off that ankle ride. The referee's allowing uh, St. John to kind of stay with that, so he Both wrestlers. tight waist and ankle ride. Hits a little elevator. He's got no danger. No, yep. then, he's, he's got, 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 got it he's hooked up. He's got it hooked up. He's got it hooked up. He's going to pin him. Yep. Cool. Cool. Once I saw him get the chin. Yeah, he hooked the snake up right there, and that was just... We said it's yeah. always present. Thomas Landrum is proud of that one. <laughs> big, big, big move. Reversal. Three point near fall. Five points added on. Seven and a point for riding time for St. John. First time he's lost after a loss. It's seven to four. Big, big win for the Gophers. Dylan Ness.
Winner by decision. Winner with a five-point move in the last 15 seconds. The other winner is Luke Becker, who told him to go down that down position here and stayed steady with it and knew that he could hit the big move from the bottom position. So look at this. Got the He's got the chin hooked up. That's what he's after first and foremost. Then he elevates with that right foot. Right now, I thought he had, a, he had an opportunity to stick him right there. The referee didn't call it, but uh, good job of St. John's getting off of his back. And then the rebite, he was able to get his belt buckle to the mat, stay off his back. So, huge win. Let's go to Shane. I'm with a smiling Jay Robinson. I don't know where we start. Let's start with Brent Kellett, 125. That was a match time decision. Why did you go with him? What impressed you most? What did you learn about him? Well, we knew, we, we've been going with him uh, the last th two or three weeks. We've been trying to get his weight under control. He's got it under control. Um, and, and he knows he can wrestle with everybody. And that's what we've been trying to convince him. And I think that's what he did today. He, he knows that when you come in this environment, if you wrestle with these guys, you're just as good as they are. So it's going to be a big positive for him. And Dylan Ness, we know how dangerous he is, shows us you wrestle every single second. He must drive you crazy. Well, yeah, he drives you crazy. And you're just wondering which one's going to show up. And the right one showed up. He's a competitor, and that's what you want. You want a guy that's out there that can do things, make things happen, and that's Dylan. So, you know, but this is far from over. I mean, there's five more to go, and anytime you're here, it's a battle. And so our five next guys, they got to come out and do what they got to do. Thanks a lot, Coach Robinson. Jane. Thanks, Shane. As Jay Robinson says, it's far from over, but the Minnesota Gophers are out in front 12 to 6. The crowd will have to get behind, and Dan Gable will have to inspire for the Hawkeyes to come back and win this one. Rankell, Dardanes, and Ness, big wins for Minnesota. We'll be back for highlights of the first half after this. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Minnesota leads 12 to 6. Here's Jim with today's What Makes Them Great segment. You know, What Makes Them Great segment, let's take a look at Minnesota's heavyweight, Tony Nelson. The two-time conference and NCAA champion. The last two seasons, he's given up only 14 points in 16 championship bracket matches. This is a strong man that moves well in this weight class. Great footwork. Here you see him on the defense and the go-behinds. Does this as well as anybody in the country. But he has the, also the quickness of a lightweight here. Here you see him faking to one side and coming back with a freight train double. So he transitions from one technique to the, to the other on the feet very well. Here you see him with the slide by attempt, attempting a short fake, coming back around. Again, moving as well as anybody half his size. But I think what separates him is the ability to win tight matches, and that means getting quick escapes. Here you see him going against Mike McMullen, at last year's NCAA runner-up. You see the battle, staying on his feet, dropping his hips, turning in, and getting the quick escape. And where that helps is it helps you with your head, hands, defense here, moving through, good footwork. If you're getting out early, if you're fresh in top position, that's what helps Tony Nelson really be dominant in the top position and really makes his man work. Here in the top position, you see him going ahead and lifting his opponent to the mat. He does not give escapes easy. He makes his opponents work for everything they get and does as good a job as anybody in the country of making the other guy carry his weight. He has great balance because of his footwork. Constantly making you work hard for that to escape and he pins the opponent's chest to the mat. And that's what makes Tony Nelson great. Great segment, Jim. We'll have a chance to see Tony Nelson here later today. Well, he wrestles a guy coming up in Bobby Telford that's a lot like him. They both carry their weight well here, but both guys don't give up much points. We'll be back for lots more wrestling action. BTN Wrestling, 165 and on up. It's the Gophers leading 12 to 6.
More BTN Wrestling presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Carver Hawkeye. And let's go to Shane, who's with Coach Brands. Coach Brands, first five matches. Pretty crazy. When you went back to the locker room, what's in your head? We went to our back too many times. Twice in the first match, once in the fifth, last, fifth match. Can't go to your back. Silliness. Long way to go. Yeah, got five matches here. Let's go to work. All right, Shane, thanks a lot. Let's go to work. And we'll start at 165 pounds. Danny Zilverberg and Nick Moore. Nick Moore, the junior. Iowa City West, the teammate of Derek St. John. They both wrestled, grew up here in this area, wrestled at Iowa City West. And Danny Zilverberg out of Wyzetta, Minnesota, Wyzetta High School. But Nick Moore's really made some strides this year. He's talked about getting to work. Coach Brands has got to be happy with the work that uh, the body of work so far in this season that uh, Moore's put together here, you know, gathering a number four ranking. And, you know, he, that, that lot of uh, guys in that weight class probably won't meet each other the rest of the year. But, uh, you know, an opportunity in the, uh, you know, in the top five rankings. Of course, you got you know, David Taylor, and he's been on a roll just, uh, you know, just munching everybody. But uh, Moore's having a good, solid season and is turned into one of the guys I think the Iowa can count on at the uh, Big Tens and International Tournament. So, guy who gets out quick from underneath. And, and Zilberberg, you know, he's kind of been a journeyman here at this weight class and, and uh, in the program. And, and uh, I know a lot of people feel pretty strongly that if he can keep this match on the feet and uh, not make any mistakes in the beginning of the match here, that, that this match winds down a lot like we saw with the uh, the match with Grothis, you know, gaining momentum against uh, Dardanes is that uh, that can happen for him. Well, last year, Zilberberg wrestled at 57 against Derek St. John and lost 7-4. to four. And I think you make a good point. I think that Iowa feels like they're at a place where they can count on Nick Moore, and I'm not sure that Minnesota feels that way and are waiting to feel that way with Zilberberg. I think they're optimistic for him, but they haven't had enough evidence yet to kind of have that feeling. And uh, it's changed with Moore. I mean, he's, he's been a different wrestler this year. And, you know, he's not, he's not always real uh, flashy, but he can shoot when he needs to. And, and uh, but, you know, how about, uh, I can't just still, get still in shock a little bit over these, the first match and the last match that we just saw. And what Don uh, Brand said, I mean, they went to their back. They went to their back, and it wasn't like uh, you didn't have ample warning in St. John's case that he was looking for a big move. And St. John normally doesn't fall for that, but, uh, you know, if you are going to ride Dylan Ness, just throwing that out there to everybody in the country, okay, if you're going to ride Dylan Ness, you are playing with fire. You know, you are, you are, you know, we're not talking wet matches and the pilot's light, lights out here. We're talking, you know, combustible material next to a, uh, a spark is uh, what you're dealing with right there because he can explode on you at any time. And for Brand Kale, that was not his one and done. It wasn't like it was a fluke. Nice shot right there. I really like what I saw there. Now, he, good work by Zilberberg getting out of it. But you see what, what happened there that uh, you know, it was more than just that half shot. There was a little bit of a follow-up to it. He did get to the leg, and I thought that was pretty really good work here by Zilberberg. David uh, Taylor leading the intermat rankings, number one, undefeated. NCAA champion, three-time finalist, trying to become a four-time finalist and a two-time NCAA champion is David Taylor. Nick Moore, big win a week ago over Tyler Caldwell from Oklahoma State, which launched him up in the rankings. Yeah, and uh, Caldwell's, you know, solid wrestler, has been an NCAA uh, finalist, so you've got a uh, really good skill set there with, for Caldwell, but uh, yeah, these are some nice wins that he's been accumulating. And again, there are, he just knows what he wants to do. And he gets an opportunity to stuff the head like this. He's going to make Zilberberg work. And there wasn't really a shot following it because it's a short time. Beginning in the second period here at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, where the Gophers lead 12 to 6, and the match is tied 0 0 at 165 between Zilberberg and Moore. And Zilberberg looking for the quick escape again. He's been able to go ahead and do what he wants to do. And, and, and turn this into a four-minute match with no score. See how he's got his ankle, knees kind of flared out. He'll struggle getting out from underneath if, he, if this is the way he's going to go about it. No back pressure is not even coming up. And again, switching into that ankle ride, this is giving Moore a lot of time to be able to work. So 
really didn't take advantage of your opportunity here, keeping a scoreless first period by getting that quick escape. There really hasn't been any effort in the down position here by Zilverberg. There's your meet summary, and yes, if you were looking at 125 and you said, is that true? Brand Kale pinning Thomas Gilman in the first period. That's exactly what happened, and the young redshirt freshman for the Gophers came out and uh, put the hurt on the highly ranked 125-pounder uh, for the Hawkeyes and got the Gophers going. It's 12 to 6. The Gophers are out in front. Jim's been talking about the come-from-behind win for Dylan Ness at 157, trailing. Um, by effectively three points and throwing a five-point re uh, move, reversal and three-point near fall, almost pinning St. John, but getting the win and the Gophers out in front. So Nick Moore trying to get the Iowa Hawkeyes back on track here. These teams, they split last year. They met twice and split in their duels. And that seems like their uh, track record for the past few years, back and forth. Silverberg able to get to his feet now, but there's really 20, 25 seconds. I mean, not many, you know, at this, at this level, you're just not going to get away from guys coming from your hands to your feet doing that, what they call it the heavyweight stand-up. Uh, too easy to follow. And if he could get a full period ride out, and that's Three. where he's on his way, we're talking about Nick Moore, who was just called warned for stalling with seven seconds left in the second period. So the Iowa wrestler has a warning for stalling on it. Yeah, it shouldn't change anything that he does right here. It doesn't change the strategy one bit. You see the look at the corner. Coach Brands said to we'll go ahead and take the down position. And nothing explosive from Chris Overberg in the down position and really fortunate to get the stall call. And so now Nick uh, Moore will uh, have the choice. Now here's here's where I think Moore has really improved, and coming it, out from under. Yeah, it really, it, and he, how he uh, is able to go ahead and keep his his, his elbow. There's Set principles in getting out center. from underneath. Elbows in, wrist out. Kind of stay bound up in a little bit of a ball right there. He pops up to his feet. Watch this. He gets lifted. Okay, and if he gets returned to the mat, uh, he's got the, the quick escape. Point. Didn't need to, but. So it's 1-0. There's a point on the board, and it's Nick Moore's. He's got a minute 50 riding time. He's got a point on the board with the escape. So effectively, it's a two-point lead right now. If the gopher, Zilberberg, cannot uh, get the takedown and re regain the riding time advantage. Well, you get one more takedown, and you've got to have major on your mind. You're thinking about team points right now. You can't leave it up to the, the, the remaining four guys behind you because there's some tough hombres to go ahead and beat for the Gophers. So, you know, you're thinking about the team right now and you know, get out of your square stance and start hitting some attacks. So I, I think that uh, the Gophers would just like to have more foot movement by uh, by Zilverberg. A little Gophers more action. And, Gophers and Hawkeyes. You know, you, you, you saw that where Moore was able to go ahead and, and snap down, and he never followed it up. Okay, so he's not following up. Okay? Nice now, shot by Zilverberg. Again, 45 seconds left. Riding time. So this is effectively a 2-0 lead right now, but a takedown would tie it up right now. See the low single leg shot. He's got to hold of both legs now, but he's got his head stuffed in there. He's got to create a little bit more separation. And at some point in time, you've got to secure one side and push away the other. And right there's the push. Yep. And now there's some. He's going to hook the leg. He's yep, going to get two. There's the two points. Now it's, it's tied unless Moore gets away, and he does. There's the escape. Moore's ahead. It says two to two on the scoreboard, but the one point advantage time would give the win to Moore unless Zilberberg can get after him right now. Nice job of Zilberberg working himself yep. back into the match, but you know what? This level, if you can get out quickly, which Moore was able to do twice. Yep, and then yeah, riding by point. Even. Yep. So the winner, Nick Moore, three points for the Hawkeyes. Now 12 to nine, inch a little closer, the Gophers. Out in front, going into 174, and boy, on in. This is just one battle after another. We start at 174. There's Evans for Iowa. Mike Evans, the junior out of Pennsylvania, up against Logan Storley from Minnesota. 
You know, Tim, we talked in the open about guys, you know, getting an arrow point in the right direction this time of year, and, and this is a really critical time, I think. These two guys here, Evans and Storley, have had battles in the past, but uh, yeah, you've got a very tough weight class with the returning national champions and Powell and, uh, and Smith, of, uh, excuse me, Perry from, excuse me, of, of Oklahoma State. And uh, these guys are, I wouldn't say in danger of moving to the next level, but you know, you certainly don't want to be pointed in the wrong direction. One of these guys will move forward off of this, but Kokesh getting better with uh, Brown from uh, uh, Penn State. These two guys kind of round out those top guys in this weight class, and uh, you know, this is maybe the first rung of the ladder here to uh, 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 finishing a good season. Last time these guys met in a dual meet, Minnesota beating Iowa in the national duels, and Storley beat Evans three to one, cementing his number one ranking at the time. And then things got tough yeah, at I the think, Big Tens. Yeah, and, and, and Evans has had it hasn't had a, a, a big win you know, as of late. There's a low shot there by Storley, and pretty crafty wrestler. See how he's keeping that elbow deep? Potentially dangerous. Wow. Um, the knee was bending in a way that uh, Pat Fitzgerald, the official, didn't like it. Calls him back to the center. Two minutes and five seconds left in the first period. Well, the winner out of that exchange then was Evans because it, I didn't see it that way, but uh, good opportunity for him to clear the scoreboard and get back and get on his offense. Storley's never uh, redshirted. He uh, was an All-American as a true freshman, All-American last year as a sophomore. Center, center, center. Evans, an All-American last year. Good job, guys. Good job. Get in the middle. Sixth place of the NCAA championships, 174. Yeah, it, 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 these guys had wrestled before where the, where the one guy had the top ranking. Well, now they're, they're down a little bit more at five and six, and you'd like to see him open up a little bit more and maybe take the lessons from that and, 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 and help their season. Yeah. I like that. Pass that. As you look up on the line here at 84, 97, Good. heavyweight, really, really important that uh, Evans for Iowa gets one of those signature wins for his team. And Storley feeling like uh, he wants to establish himself back up there, as you said, Jim, as we look at the rankings. They're there. They're not in the top four. Well, much but like there they are, five and six. Yeah, much like Dylan Ness we saw earlier, he puts pressure. Storley puts pressure on the guy who rides him. You know, he he, he can get reversals at any time, and he can follow it up with a pretty decent ride himself. So, a scoreless uh, uh, first period doesn't necessarily hurt him. It's good to see him on the offense if you're a Minnesota fan. But for Evans, I mean, I think he really has to go out there and try to create some action here and jack him up and. You know, throw caution to the wind a little bit. 20 seconds left in the first period, and the wind's won here so far because there's been no, there's been too much caution uh, by both wrestlers. 0-0, zero, zero, 10 seconds left in the first period, no score. Yeah, it's not like it's not getting physical out there. <laughs> it's not like they like each other. Yeah. There's more evidence. Oh, that was, that was coming button. in with a straight-on headbutt. Yeah, now that's going to be... Uh, so the referee didn't catch that early. Didn't make note of it, but Evans really came at him with the top of his head early, and, and uh, Storley kind of let you know in that last exchange what he thought of it. Jay Robinson tell him to calm down. Evans uh, deferred his choice, and Logan Storley will choose down to begin the second period. You no, know, but that's what, kind of what these guys need, all right? They need a little bit of this. Nobody's getting hurt out there, but they need a little bit of, uh, you know, let's ratchet it up a little bit. Let's we'll see what happens. Evans starts on top. And Storley, as you talked about, Jim, he's so good on the bottom and here. He elevates, but Evan stays with him really nice. Staying close to the hips, staying in control, no change. Yeah, nice job of rolling through by Evans, and he's going to win that exchange. 21 seconds of riding time. But you can see how Storley puts the pressure on the top, man. Stay with him. Now the crowd's getting back into it. Maybe a little bit of the... You know, they're roughing up, and a nice job of following through by Evans there. Good. But uh, 
A little action brings this uh, large crowd on a Saturday afternoon to life. Hands are split, but the, uh, Evans is able to get elbow deep there, high in the crotch there, be able to go ahead and follow up and drop down on the leg. So, Well, now you're starting to think when you're approaching that 40 seconds of riding time, you're starting to really look at that opportunity that Evans has. Does have an opportunity. Of course, Thorley pretty good in the top position as well, so you've got to bank on as much time as you can in these tight matches. Look what Evans does right now is he'll, he'll uh, at the, the hand-fighting moment, he'll go deep, elbow deep with the, uh, works on the ankle, but look at the left arm right now. Left arm works the far ankle. What keeps him from being called for stalling in there is just his, uh, his footwork, but he hasn't really, the action really is he hasn't moved off the ankle. He shouldn't get about 10 seconds on the ankle. He's able to drop back down on it. Well, Evans starting to make a statement. Last year, Storley and Evans wrestled three times. Yep. Every time, Storley won. Well, and every time, it, it's something like that on the edge of the mat here where Storley's able to get that timely escape. Just finds a way to, to uh, win matches. And Evans was working hard in the top position there. And, and now, you know, Storley looks, still looks pretty fresh for all that work he put in in the bottom position. They met in the NCAA championships. Storley winning three to two. They met in the two dual meets last year. Storley winning three to one and four to three. Always close, always Storley last year. Right now, Storley out in front one zero, but a minute five riding time for Evans here in the second period, 20 seconds left. The Minnesota Gophers out in front of the Hawkeyes, 12 to nine. Both guys trying to gather themselves a little bit from that exchange on the map. Seems like it. Not really committing to it, but again, Evans really wrestling pretty high. He hasn't been able to get any shots off. He hasn't been able to break through the head hands defense of uh, Logan Storley. Well, Evans gives his opportunity now to uh, come out from underneath. He chooses down. Storley's in front. Jim, you talked about it. Storley good in all positions, especially good on the top. Right now. He needs to at least ride five, six seconds to get rid of the riding time. He looked over into his, his corner as they gave him the, the five-finger uh, salute, basically, to let him know he had to ride for five seconds. He just did that. Actually, we're at 10. But, you know, right now, you just go ahead and take your opportunities and see if uh, you can ride him the whole period. Evans hand fighting. Looks like Storley's willing to go ahead and let him go. And there's the escape. It's all tied up. There's no riding time advantage. It comes down to this, a minute and a half. Carver Hawkeye Arena, Evans trying to get his first win over Storley in the last two years. He's 0-3 against the junior from Minnesota. Two juniors going at it, two highly ranked, and a number five, number six, and it's all tied up in the last period. Right now, if you just look at the position, Storley just looks to be a little bit, a little bit lower. Evans tried that straight on shot that Storley was able to get a, a counter shot off of, but 103, yeah, you hope the guys at this level don't just settle to go into overtime and try to create some offense. This is where you work on your, you know, you knew coming into this match who you're wrestling, watch some film, you know, see some, maybe some tendencies. What did you gather from that to hit, create a go-to shot at this point in time in the match? The fans would like to see Evans' go-to shot. They want to will him through it. They'll cheer him through it. They're ready to explode. Carver Hawkeye on a Saturday afternoon. Iowa, Minnesota, border war, and it's 12 to nine. Two and three matchup, living up to its billing. 20 seconds left in regulation. We go to overtime, we'll talk about overtime. We'll go straight to a sudden victory, one minute period. But will one of these guys score here in the last 10 seconds? You gotta, you gotta pull the trigger, Jim. There's the double There's leg trigger. shot. There's the trigger. Duck. And the time runs out. We go to overtime. Well, that's what's so frustrating. Here, all that was available a minute earlier. And uh, give Storley the credit for going after it there. And that's why you can see how dangerous he is. We we'll put one minute on the clock. They go right to it. Any score, there's your winner. Sudden victory. Yeah, Evans really needs to get on his offense right now. What is his? What, what is he trying to accomplish out here? There, there's a low ankle pick.
If there's no score in this minute, we'll go to two 30-second periods. We'll talk about it when we get there. Hard on the collar tie right there. We're in overtime. It's 174 pounds. And this very close meet between the Gophers and the Hawkeyes. Four matches to go. We're in overtime at 174. Good look at Logan Storley. Mike Evans, number five and six ranked wrestlers in the nation going at it. Evans trying to break a losing streak against Storley. Lost three times last year. There's Doug. Little flurry. Nice work by both guys there. No, no points. No points. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting move by Storley there. At well, the yeah, yeah he's, he's waiting at the end of the period here. He's clearly decided in this match that he's going to try to go ahead and score at the end. But, but all, everything he's looking for might be available there early for Evans. He looked a little bit more active in the back part of that match with that last 10, 15 seconds as well. Two 30-second periods. We wrestle just like a match. We wrestle them all out. And whoever scores the most, if there's a, a leader at the end of these two that's periods, they're the winner. See how Evans is locked in the crotch there almost immediately. This is a scoring opportunity. Stalemate. I'm going to call a stalemate. Tom Brand's not at all happy with that, and he's going to let Pat know, and Pat Fitzgerald's not going to well, stand for it. It's an advantage position for his guy. And this might be a, a, a little bit of, see, he's got a leg that comes to the far ankle. And really, that's Thorley's problem that he's in the position he's in because he switches into it instead of kicks out. The official Pat Fitzgerald gives a warning to uh, the Iowa bench to Tom Brands. Now, that was real arguing. warning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he uh, was emphatic. And now uh, Storley gets an opportunity. Storley chose down to begin this. Evans will go down to start the second of these 30-second periods. Great ride by Evans. Yeah, it is. Yep, ankle to ankle. And there's the end of the first 30-second period in the first overtime period. And now Evans underneath the crowd on their feet. All he has to do is get an escape and hold it. There's Joe Williams, three-time NCAA champion, Olympian, standing there in the front row, back at his alma mater. And right now, Evans has an advantage. All he has to do is peel hands, and, and he, he does. Feels. Now, can Storley give a takedown? Uh, Evans has not been warned for, well, they had the warning for stalling, so that may make a difference. Short time. Evans going to play the edge. Warning Iowa. The first warning. Eight seconds left. If Evans can hold on, he will have this overtime win and the first win against his nemesis in four tries. And he does! Evan brings the crowd to his feet and brings Iowa even with the Gophers. 12 to 12. What a win for Mike Evans over Logan Storley. The fans go crazy. The meat is all tied up. We'll be back for 184 and more BTN action right after this. Wrestling on BTN is brought to you by Jay Robinson Intensive Camps. The change is forever. And we had a big change right here in the momentum. Mike Evans. Well, Mike uh, Evans gets to his feet, Tim, and that's the big thing. He made the decision er e easy for Storley to go ahead and try to win this with 25 seconds left. And we see the emotional reaction by Evans, and he felt he was due. And the crowd was emotional. It's electrified. We go to the last three. We're at 184. Sammy Brooks, the freshman, going up against the veteran Steinhaus. Kevin Steinhaus. Junior from Pennock, Minnesota. I think he's a senior. Sign out as a senior. And All American. Good physical. 
Brooks has had a good season so far here for the freshman up at the weight class and likes to work a lot off that two on one. Seems to get more, uh, you know, stronger as the match goes on. Steinhaus, I mean, he's been, you know, out part of the season, coming back from a, from an injury and got a kind of late start. But uh, you know, this is probably just what the doctor ordered here for him—an opportunity to get in front of a lot of people and this type of environment and show what you're capable of doing. Had a tough finish to it, uh, the last latter part of the season. Uh, they're working off the underhook right into that uh, single leg here. So looking for more room to work with. He's on the outer third of the mat right there. He's going to go ahead and try to do the dump. And he gets to take that. Both ankles there. And One green, one neutral. Somebody with a little bit of interest looking on there, Dan Gable. Statue outside. He opened this place back in the early 80s. And... In 21 years, won 21 Big Ten titles for the Hawkeyes and 15 NCAA titles as their coach. Of course, the Olympic gold medalist in 1972. Never a Hawkeye meet in this place without Gable. Inside trip there attempt by Brooks. And now Steinhaus, again, he works pretty well off the underhook. And he gives a little limp arm there off the single leg. Drops into a low ankle ride himself. So that's just experience. But, I, you know, I like what Brooks does. I mean, gets out there and gets after it. He works the ties hard. You know, that's going to pay off for him during the course of his, year, his career just to get after these guys. And, and uh, he, he tests them physically, and I like that from a freshman. Kevin Steinhaus, as you said, he no, no, no. had a Green, slow Foster, start. Green, he was injured. And down there in uh, foreign territory for him being ranked as low as ninth. Yeah, he's I mean, working his way back up, and this would be a nice, you know, nice confidence building situation. I, I, I think that it's, you got a senior here. He's, he knows what he's capable of doing. He's had some big wins over the course of his career. Again, just wasn't able to put together tournament time last year. Brooks out of Oak Park, Illinois, Oak Park River Forest, the same high school as the Dardanes. And you can see a lot of similarities with their styles there. They work heavy hands, now working off that underhook. Ian Brooks just has to stay in this physically. And, you know, and for him, quickly pace is more important than score. Right there, a little counter shot. He's in, and as you say, he's elbow deep. Yeah, Can he trip it? Well, does he have the experience to know what he needs to do? Does he, does he needs to come all the way back to the center. Now with about seven seconds left, he's got to just go for it. Get his hips in. You see the hip separation there? You can't score with the leg up if you've got your hips that far away from your opponent. A little closer for Brooks there. Luke Becker out there. Encouraging Becker, Brandon Hagum, the assistant coaches for a long time, head coach there, Jay Robinson. Steinhaus will choose down to choose to begin the second period, leading four to two over Sammy Brooks, senior versus the freshman. Again, the, the, but the pace was good for Brooks right there. He's going to give up the escape, but the pace is good on the feet. There's a, that just an opportunity. That leg just kind of popped up into Brooks's lap right there. He grabs it. Got kind of shocked. He didn't really know what to do with it. Five to two with that escape. Here's the intermat rankings. Maryland with Jimmy Sheptock at the top. At the top. Yeah. See, this is, this pace is favoring Brooks right now. There's a lot of uh, you know ammunition being expended right now. No uh, no kill shots, so to speak. But you've got. Uh, Good position by Brooks, though. He's, he's yeah, keeping good position. Yeah, but but keep the pace of the match up, and he'll 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 he'll, he'll test this guy who hasn't had a full season worth of uh, uh, conditioning out there, and there's a, in particular match conditioning. Sammy Brooks stepping in for Lofthouse. You saw Ethan Lofthouse ranked number four in the nation at 184 for the Hawkeyes, but uh, just hasn't been able to make his way back in, uh, fully recovered from uh, his injury. Yeah, there goes Steinhaus off the underhook, but just didn't follow it up. It's just not as crisp. Works off the underhook that time, really. Now a counter shot there by Brooks. There's the two points, and you talk about the pace. Yeah. 
Coach Brands over there telling him to, and, and Coach Morningstar over there telling uh, uh, Brooks to keep him down. They want to add up the riding time here. They know that, One that point uh, escape. Steinhaus is good in the top position. Riding time advantage there is none, but six to four point advantage in favor of Steinhaus from Minnesota. It's 12 to 12. The meet has been tied twice. It's been tied at sixes, been tied at 12s. It's been one of those great border war rivalries that the, this crowd and the fans from Minnesota have come to expect. Let's That's the it. end of the second period. Full of surprises. This, this meet has been full of surprises. 74. Taking a, a good shot by, this time, got the leg up high enough here and able to get a small little shallow kick on him and just enough to take him down. Hey, you think about all the opportunities Brooks has had with the leg up in the air. He got probably one out of five and uh, he could increase that ratio. Well, there just seemed to be a, a sense of urgency there. Okay, I've got it and I'm getting right after it and he's finished it a lot faster last time, Jim. And here is good hand fighting on the part of Brooks. Gets the one. See, that's where the crowd helps out to help make that call. Steinhaus really is in no, uh, it's better off for him to go ahead and continue to ride and get the uh, riding time point. Crowd gets a little excited, gets a little impatient, and just kind of let go of it. I don't, I, I don't know if Brooks knows how good a condition, or got how good a position he is in this match. Brooks just got a, is a split second faster pace right now than Steinhaus. Yeah, and if, you, if you're Kevin Steinhaus, you need a shot right and here. And he got this it. Great call, Jim. Now, can he finish it? Better, and you want to be able to come out to that ankle if you can, get a little elevation. And right now, he's getting a little bit of a blow, but he's going to come back to that dump. And, and there's both the ankles. two points, yeah. It was a little wobbly, but it worked. And it could be just what he needed. If he hadn't got that, Jim, he'd have been in big trouble. It's still, it's eight to six. There is no riding time, but that was a big takedown for Steinhaus. Well, it really puts the onus on Brooks to get a shot of his own. Riding time won't be a factor. Really needs to try to get a shot. There right it now. is. About the sixth or seventh time. And on the leg, no finish. Well, the sense of urgency has to be right now. He can't wait. There's 30 seconds left. He needs to be in on a shot inside four. Well, if, if you're Steinhaus, you want to get your feet moving. If you're Brooks, you just keep the pace up and just take what's there. He works really well off the two-on-one. Go back to what you like to do. Come to the two-on-one. Get your single leg off. And hopefully, you can finish. A veteran performance by Steinhaus here as he knows right where he's at, where he's at. Got a tremendous takedown there about 40 seconds ago. That's a good point, Tim. He answered early, didn't wait for this to become, uh, didn't get the crowd involved. When Brooks was trying to hunt him, he went ahead and got his shot off, and that's really the best time to do it. That, I'll tell you what, you, you mentioned Brooks. Does he know what good shape he is? Steinhaus understood the situation out there. And so Steinhaus, a winner there, three points on the board. Now Minnesota goes out front, 15 to 12. And we're ready for 197 pounds. Nathan Burak and Scott Schiller. You talked about Scott Schiller having a great year. Now he's the real deal. He's a... Uh, Weight in the top position. And I can't be the most confident guy in this weight class in the country. The way he's performed to this point. Nathan Burek uh, having a good year himself, a sophomore out of Colorado Springs. Wrestled last year as a freshman. Sat out a year after high school. Colorado Springs worked out at the Olympic Training Center. And uh, so a true sophomore here, stepping in at 197 against the number one ranked wrestler in the nation, Scott Schiller. You know, what we've seen from Burak is that he's also had the ability to get on legs uh, shots and just not had the quite uh, a, a good finish ratio to the time he gets in on legs, likes to work off that two-on-one. Schiller out of North Dakota, West Fargo High School in North Dakota. Stay on it. Hey, stay on your angle. And he will stalk you, he will come forward. Nice shot there by Schiller. Elbow deep. Gets the nice hook. 
Right, beautiful job of driving after that far ankle. Again, I, he, he very confident, really wrestling well. It doesn't take a backward step, whole match. Good. They wrestled at the dual meet last year. Let's show you what kind of improvement Schiller has made. He was ranked number 10 at this time last year. He beat the unranked Gurak 10 to three. Burak, uh, as we said, having a good year, ranked in the top 20, and in on a shot. And you notice how that doesn't really phase Schiller. He's just, you know, I'm going to fight it like, just like I'm in the middle of the man. If he tried to go ahead and pass out and get out, he might have given up a two-point takedown, but he's very patient in there. Good job. Good position here. Every time you snap, right hand down. Good. Good job. Burak's always had the ability to get in on guys' legs. Hey, we got to get you know, he, and he and is getting inside. better at, at his finishes, but this right is against right the number one guy. You don't get many opportunities to go ahead and do that. There's a nice shot. Good reach. There. Now a counter shot by Schiller. Wow, that was powerful. <laughs> Moving up and getting back points. And looking for those back points, and, it, and he is driving it hard. Probably. We're talking about the number one ranked wrestler in the nation, Scott Schiller for the Gophers. You know, that's that... Uh, that scene from the hunt from Red October where you go drive into the torpedo, and that's exactly what happened there is that, that uh, Schiller came forward. Instead of backing out or circling out, he drove forward on his own double leg and just uh, you know, caved uh, Burak in uh, off of his shot. Lowered level like he was going to attack, and great work. These two met three times last year. Schiller winning all three, but had that big win, 9-10 to, to 3 at the duels, but they were close in the other duel meet, and uh, he... Uh, One green. Oh, but uh, no, Burak won in the Big Tens. And so, they're two and one. Burak won in the Big Tens with the last, uh, with a sudden victory uh, takedown. So he knows how to beat this number one ranked undefeated wrestler. But right now, Schiller having his way, six to two. Right now, right here is where Burak needs to execute something. We talked about early. I mean, he. You, it's uh, it's right there, right off the one one. But here's what the, dif the difference is: is that Bert, uh, Schiller goes forward. You get out of his leg, he attacks you. He's got it locked up. He's got a cradle locked up. So you got the two. Briark breaks the cradle. No point. Yes, he does give back points. Two points back. And at the end of the first period, the score is ten to two. Watch this. Look at this earlier three. takedown here. What's the action by Burak, right? Oh. But Schiller goes forward, right? He puts his foot down and goes forward. He goes and attacks you. He goes out and gets him some. Ready? And elevates Set. that bottom leg and gets the back points. Did the same thing Double. off of Burak's shot before. He attacks you. Keep up, keep up, and, and that's that's unique from what the wrestling that we've seen here earlier today. You know, too many guys just try to get to a neutral position and don't think about scoring right there. One green. Ten to three already is on the scoreboard. And Burke, Burak, you know, this is a point in the match. You, you gotta get gotta be up in the corner. You gotta be telling your guy, hey, keep firing, keep get, getting after it here. Don't you know, that's one of those things where you you know the dual meet score may, might be 15 to 12, but you gotta tell your guy, you know, hey, you got some confidence here. Get go out there and create some action and, and learn some lessons that you can next time you go up against this guy. Well, you mentioned confidence uh, when you were it's talking about Schiller. Here. I'll tell you what, the I confidence, though, back, with Scott Schiller back. is huge. You're, it, you're right. It, I mean, and um, he has taken it all out of this crowd right now. Ten to three in the second period. A one minute minute left one minute. at 197. Yeah, I think everybody can hear us talking. You know? <laughs> it, is, it is eerily quiet in, in Carver. But again, if you're if you're Burak, I mean, it's not not time to shut down here. Just go ahead and get on your offense and, and see if you, you learn something about yourself. And that's good work right there. Okay. Nice work again by Schiller. And a takedown for two for Schiller. 30 seconds left. The Hawkeyes have won four of the last five series duels held here at the arena, and they are getting close to. Uh, a rare loss to Minnesota here in this arena. The Minnesota's caught. most yeah. recent win over Iowa here was in 2007. Seven years ago is the last time 
Minnesota won here at Carver Hawkeye. Yeah, you, you just see that distract, distressed look by, by Burak. I mean, he's got scored on a lot, but you know, his deal is always going to be trying to keep a high pace, create a lot of uh, opportunities, and, and Schiller's really taking advantage of it. But I don't, that doesn't mean you stop being you. You know, you just go after it. And the end of the second period coming up. Score 12 to 4 in favor of Scott Schiller, the undefeated, top ranked 197 pounder. Good look at this junior out of good? West Fargo, Set. North Nine. Dakota. In the center of the back. Set. Man, you look at uh, that the one, two, three punch at 84, 97 and heavyweight for Minnesota. You throw in Storley, Storley and uh, you get some performances like you can out of Ness and the, the Dardanes. And now there's not anybody that uh, doesn't uh, know what's going on for Minnesota at uh, 125. Well, Minnesota has a lot of guys, you know, what, eight returning All-Americans this year, a returning NCAA champion, a number one ranked guy at 97. They've got some tournament firepower that, that uh, you know, that ranked number three in the country right now. And I think that that's a lot of big, it just says what Iowa's been able to do since the Penn State meet. They've improved quite a bit. Yes, they have. And, uh, but this is a this is a match where you're going up against a really balanced a lineup here that, that maybe in the beginning of the year, you'd say, well, yeah, I, I, Minnesota should win this dual meet, which they are. They're kind of returning to form, but uh, they have the ability to you know, compete with Penn State. Nice shot, but uh, Scott uh, Schiller does a nice job of uh, pushing the head to the side, good hip action, and now gets behind Burak and finishes off for two points, and that's off the shot of Burak. Yeah, it, it is. And, and Let's go to the middle, guys. Screens down. Again, you keep going. I mean, that's, that's all you guys, can tell your guy. Seconds. Just keep going. 15 to four, a major decision on the way going for also? Schiller also? over Burak. Like I said, they're familiar with each other. They wrestled three times last year. One green, and you one. take a look at those you know, what does Minnesota need to do, you know, to, in the tournaments? They need those guys that are ranked, you know, five and six, and, you know, those lower-ranked guys to be able to go ahead and get in that top four. They need good performances, and guys like Schiller and Nelson to repeat. Schiller to go ahead and grab a national title. They're right there. Well, nobody's going to say, well, past 125, you're looking pretty good now. That Sam... Uh, um, what, Brand, what, Brand, yeah, Kale. Brand Kale uh, with the big pin at uh, 125 over Thomas Gilman. They want him to continue with that confidence and uh, finish well at the Big Tens. And all of a sudden, you got a, a lineup of 10 formidable wrestlers. 16 to 5. Winner by major decision, Scott Schiller. And so. That makes it 19 to 12, and that seals the deal from a standpoint of score. It's 19 to 12. We'll be back for a big heavyweight match between Nelson and the Iowa Hawkeye heavyweight. Wrestling on BTN is presented by Cliff Keen Athletics, built for life. 19 to 12, Minnesota leads Iowa as we go into the 100 or the heavyweight and there is a very special t-shirt worn by the Minnesota Gophers today. Yeah, takedown for cancer. The, uh, Doug Ryder from, uh, you know that name, from Gilbertville, Don Bosco, the Ryder boys, of course, wrestled the University of Minnesota and uh, uh, Doug was, uh, father was diagnosed with cancer but uh, see that blue and gold, that's the Gilbertville, Don Bosco colors and uh, that's what they're representing today, taking down brain cancer. Bobby Telford, the Iowa heavyweight, 15 and one this year, going up against the NCAA champion, Tony Nelson. And Nelson coming off uh, a loss to Adam Coon, the uh, true freshman heavyweight from Michigan. And that was the difference in the meet. It came down to heavyweight, Michigan winning it, coming from behind at the end with that win. Telford, a junior out of Hoxton, Delaware, St. Mark's High School. Nelson from Cambridge, Minnesota, Cambridge Asante High School. And uh, Jim had an opportunity to do the uh, What Makes Them Great segment on Tony Nelson, and he is one of the great ones, a two-time NCAA champion. Well, it's been a while since we've had a three-time NCAA champion at the heavyweight weight class. I mean, Carlton Hasselrig comes to mind, big Jimmy Jackson from Oklahoma State back in the, the 70s. But uh, uh, 
you know, Tony has that opportunity, but this is such a great weight class this year. Adam Kuhn having a good season, and I understand he was beat by Mike McClure from Michigan State, and they kind of uh, taken uh, shots at each other. Of course, Mike McMullen from Northwestern, and Bobby Telford at rank number three right now is in there as well. A big guy that, uh, you know, like Nelson, carries his weight well in the top position, and these guys are so difficult to get away from. Uh, Nelson probably has a little bit more skill level on the feet. But uh, and you've got Adam Chalfit over in Indiana who had a win over McMullen, and so it just, yeah. you know, it's a merry-go-round. And um, out of the top 12 ranked wrestlers in the nation, at least eight of them are um, from the Big Ten. There's a heavyweight that was very special for Minnesota. They, he was their starter for three years. Um, and uh, Ben Burhau is now the assistant coach for the Hawkeyes. And so he's up against his old teammates, and until last year, he was an administrative assistant with uh, Minnesota, getting his masters, but uh, Iowa had this uh, spot as a true assistant coach, and um, he took it, and he is a Hawkeye right now, and they are behind 19 to 12. We're in the final match, and something special would have to happen for the Hawkeyes to uh, come from behind here, more than a pin. It has to be something, some kind of unsportsmanlike uh, situation going on. So the the deal was sealed, really, with that um, major decision at 197 by Scott Schiller. One minute left in the first period, so you've got, uh, you know, both guys like to work the collar tie really hard, and it doesn't look like very much. That Telford in on the leg, it's not an opportunity to score. This would wake this crowd up. And it'd be a, a great way, even if they don't win the meet, it would be something special for uh, Bobby Telford to yeah. come to get this win. They'll try to get him back to the center of the net. Can't stay out there in the outer third. He's got this grip in a good position. And, and, but Nelson is, uh, doesn't want to head back to the center of the mat, and Telford is losing that grip a little bit. So Stop. 19 seconds Stop. left in the first period. Telford in on it, but wasn't able to complete the takedown. Telford ranked number three, Nelson ranked number two. Again, you don't get many scoring opportunities to that, uh, that back leg of Nelson, so now he's changed his stance up a little bit. So I think uh, good period so far for Telford. And this first period is coming to an end. It's 0-0, zero, zero. we're at heavyweight here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. On a Saturday afternoon, Bobby Telford, number three ranked wrestler, a junior, up against the senior two-time NCAA champion, Tony Nelson. Again, what separated him in this weight class over the years is quick escapes and being able to stop, you know, stick, you know, carry guys, make guys carry his weight in the top position. So, comes up. Telford's got to make him work. Wrestle, wrestle. Right? He's able to get, wrestle, elevate that wrestle. knee. He's got his, see how he's got the, the grip locked up? Now he came off and he's going to try to get to the ankle and twist the knee a little bit. Advantage position for, for uh, Telford, but he lost it there. Got his head to the outside. Nice work there. Nice work by, by Nelson being able to go ahead and you know look like that leg was to the inside, but he was able to stuff Telford's head to the outside and then just put more weight on his leg and get the quick escape. So he did that with 26 seconds of riding time for Telford. Nelson out front, 1-0 with that. Escape, and Jim, we talked about it in the opening, uh, the dual meets. Uh, Minnesota here is going to get a win. They had a loss to Michigan. Iowa's going to have a loss now because the Penn State-Iowa meet is not an official uh, Big Ten uh, meet. Um, and so Minnesota goes and has a win over Penn State, and all of a sudden we've got a big Three, four-way tie. Yeah, we're giving out a lot of T-shirts and hats, but, you know, the, the, the uh, bottom line is is that I really think that it's more important as what direction you come out of this meet as opposed to, you know, what what, what it sets yourself up for. And, you know, it's nice to take down that trophy, but it's the trophies in March that really count. I would say really count, but it's, it's all indicative of, of where you want to get to. and. Now these guys have individual goals. You know, Minnesota seconds, has eight All-Americans that want to be national champions, and Iowa's had, you know, guys, six returning guys that, that uh, really have a spot, and we've seen some improvement from some of their guys, and some of them took a step Center. back today. Center. BTN will bring you the 100th edition of the Big Ten Wrestling Championships from Madison, Wisconsin at Cole Center. 
uh, March 9th at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time, live, the Big Ten Wrestling Championships on BTN. And in talking to the, the, the Minnesota coaching staff, as we did on the call, is that uh, Tony Nelson was kind of caught being the ag aggressor in the, the overtime situations on the feet, where really they feel that, you know, when you get into the tournaments, he's probably going to be, I would say, a, a little less aggressive and maybe play to his strong suit, which is this here in the top position. Really important uh, 15 seconds here for uh, Bobby Telford to get out. Let's go. We're starting a third period here. Nelson out 1-0. Telford's opportunity to come out from underneath. Nelson very good on top. Really, if you with that spiral ride, working real hard, it keeps that weight on the on the hands. And it doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot, but that chest, the, where he keeps his chest and how he constantly rams that left uh, arm forward, keeps the weight on the opponent's hands. And, okay, that was nine seconds. Quickly, quickly. You might have to do that four or five times before you get mat. to 15, 20 seconds. Set, top man. And that's what you, and you pointed Bombs out, that's mat. what you've got to be ready Set. to do. Yes, there's hard action, but there's a lot of patience involved here, too. Yeah, he's got, see how the, full, the front trip right there, get, get him moving forward, and then the front trip. There's another nine seconds. Again, you have to, might have to do this four or five times, but Nelson is, is doesn't give you anything easy underneath. There's no intentional escapes in his world unless he's going to try to get a major. Your hands on the mat. Got it? Ready, set. Get him down. Set. Working hard. Set. Brought a little bit more time this time. And Telford is working hard, believe me. He's got, it's like bench pressing about 300 pounds right now. Nelson. The advantage time going his way. He's eliminated the 26 seconds that Telford had. It's going his way now, but there's a long ways to go before that minute of riding time is his. But right now, Nelson's thinking about one thing, and that's riding him out. Yeah, and you can tell that the Iowa coaching staff's been working on the explosion of Telford. He's trying to get a good first move. He's got that leg clear. Now he's going to work on the hands. Right. Looks like Nelson has the wrist ride. He's going to go ahead and run with a front trip. Now he's going to pop the hips in. I think he'll get about one more crack at that before he uh, probably gets called for stalling. But you know what? I I would keep him in the top position. I wouldn't let the referee dictate the tempo or your strategy of the match right now. You see Ben Burhow, who has wrestled often in the room with Tony Nelson over the years at Minnesota, having been a former Minnesota giving instructions to see that, his guy. Yeah, he's, see how that left leg was able to slide up first and we were able to get that distance. If you go back and look at that, that left leg was able to come up and he uh, was able to beat Tony Nelson to the punch right there and then come up and get hand control. So good action by Telford. Staying persistent, getting after it, and finally getting that one point escape. There's no riding time advantage for either. It's one to one, 50 seconds left in regulation at heavyweight. Come on, guys, do it in regulation. Let's go, let's go. 45 seconds, there's a slide by attempt there by Telford, but Nelson's really not pushing into him. And what I noticed when I was doing the What Makes Him Great segment here, Nelson will not just go straight into a technique. He'll fake one direction and come back and try to hit it. So, let's see if he tries to get Telford moving. Working off that underhook, fought off pretty well by, by Nelson. And we're 10 seconds from another overtime. You know, heavyweight wrestling is just different. You, know, you just, you guys are so big and, and powerful and strong, and you just can't attack them usually straight on. And, and you gotta be ready to go all the way through these 30 second periods. Yes. I mean, unless it's there, as you would say, Jim. But I mean, it, it, here's you got the one point, uh, uh, or the one minute for the sudden victory. Um, but uh, the winner often in heavyweight is the one that doesn't lunge at the end and try to make a shot that is, is ill-advised. Yeah, and, and, and if you're gonna be a guy that takes shots, you gotta be able to find a way to get back to the neutral position, not get spun around on. That's, uh, that's easier said than done. Okay. I like that little half shot right there, a little snatch single, and maybe you get to the leg and 
see what happens. And but really, this kind of this action looks like we're headed to the 32nd uh, ride out periods. We're in a sudden victory overtime here at Heavyweight. 20 seconds left in the first one minute sudden victory. One to one in, in uh, regulation between the number two and number three heavyweights ranked in the in the nation. A single leg attempt. He's got it. And he's going to be able to finish it two points. Telford, big win. Big win in many ways. Bobby Telford. Well, he did, off his back. He went for it. Yes. You know, you give him credit. I mean, I'll tell you what, the, the, that's three losses for Nelson in this month. And, and uh, it's a big win for Bobby Telford. Really, what a confidence builder it was for Telford there. But tip my hat to Bobby Telford for taking that shot, not waiting to go into the right out. Winner, Bobby Telford, the winner of the dual meet, Minnesota 19, Iowa 15. Today's Cliff Keen Outstanding Wrestler, there he is, Sam Brenkale. The Cliff King, outstanding wrestler. You see what he did right here, the whip over <laughs> after he already got a five point mat, a, a point move earlier in the match, gets the head off the mat. Easy call on the fall. Well, huge upset. There's the difference right there. It started out fast for Minnesota, and they stayed on it. Jim, your thoughts about the meet? Well, the 25-pound match was a nine-point swing, but gosh, the, the surprises. Evans and Telford, nice wins here for the Hawkeyes, and of course, the big win at uh, 157 uh, for uh, uh, Dylan Ness, and the big win at 125 pounds. So really four matches that really didn't go the way you think they were gonna go. When you, when you set this out, you thought it was gonna be a grinder. Maybe a 15-15, you know, 18 to 12 match, but bonus points were key and surprises were key. Once again, the final from Iowa. Minnesota 19, Iowa 15. Tune in next Saturday to catch 7th ranked Nebraska as they travel to Illinois to take on the 11th ranked Fighting Illini at 5 p.m. Eastern. So for my broadcast partners, Jim Gibbons and Shane Sparks, I'm Tim Johnson. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, Live Big, Iowa. Thank you. 